So here we have the solution for the Dirichlet problem in a disk, so Laplace's equation with prescribed boundary conditions um, that we constructed in, in the last couple of videos. And so what I'm going to do now is the same trick that we did back in 4.1, which is to uh, interchange the integral with the summation sign in order to find a, a Green's kernel or Green's function for, for this problem. So, so let's see here. So I, we can rewrite this by using the formulas uh, for the coefficients and putting them in place. So the, the constant one becomes 1 over 2 pi times the integral of um, f of theta d theta. And then, you know what, actually, let's switch to a different uh, variable. So the dummy variable of integration is going to be a phi. Um, and then we've got the rest of the series here. So n equals 1 to infinity. And by combining uh, terms, we have rn over pi capital rn. And then uh, we will have the integral 0 to 2 pi of f of phi times cosine n phi cosine n theta plus sine n phi sine uh, n theta. And that whole business is going to be integrated with respect to phi. All right, and so now uh, by using a trigonometric identity, uh, we can combine these terms. And we have uh, 1 over 2 pi times the integral 0 to 2 pi f of phi. And then we have 1 plus 2 times the series from 1 to infinity of uh, little r over big R. Um, well, I guess I don't need to put absolute values on those because those are real. Uh, to the n, and then the trig identity gives us cosine of n times the difference um, theta minus phi. And that's with respect to d phi. And so we can take uh, exactly this par portion, oh, sorry. Not exactly that. Exactly this portion right here um, as our Poisson kernel for the disk. OK, and so um, let's simplify this Poisson kernel a little bit. Just grab it here. Um, and see what we can do. So, so using geometric series formula, we can rewrite this as 1 plus uh, r e to the i theta minus phi over capital R minus little r e to the i theta minus phi um, plus, and then the same thing again. Only this time the exponents are negative. OK. And then we can combine to put these over uh, same common denominator. And we get r squared minus little r squared all over r squared minus little r squared, uh, sorry, plus little r squared minus r big R cosine of the difference. Um, and so, so this is one form or the polar form, rather, of the um, Poisson kernel. So the Poisson kernel for, for radius capital R with uh, coordinates RT, but T is currently equal to theta minus V. So um, this allows us to look at the formula for what, what the value of a harmonic function is at a particular point in terms of this, this integral representation. So we've got uh, r squared minus little r squared over cosine of the difference um, f of phi d phi, right? And um, if, if you're willing to allow complex variables in a little bit, 
then this is the same thing as u at the point r e to the i theta because uh, the complex number r e to the i theta, well, those are the polar coordinates for that complex number. So this is 1 over 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi. And then what we've got here is actually the real part of um, r plus little r e to the i theta minus v over r minus little r e to the i theta minus v. Um, and in fact, if you want to take it a little bit further, you can pull the real part out front. This is the real part of 1 over 2 pi i um, times the integral around the circle of radius r um, of 1 over zeta minus z times f of zeta d zeta. So this is just a, a line integral around the circle. Uh, it's done in the complex plane. And um, so, yeah, the uh, CR here, this is all of the numbers in the complex plane that have uh, modulus equal to R, so the circle of radius R centered at the origin. Um, <coughs> and so, so this guy in the uh, parentheses here, you should recognize this as a Cauchy integral formula if you've had complex analysis. And so we're actually just looking at the real part of some analytic function f. And <coughs> so um, when you take complex analysis, you learn that if you have any uh, complex analytic function, so that means it's a complex function that's differentiable with respect to a complex variable, um, then it's real and imaginary parts so the, the real part and the imaginary part are both going to be harmonic functions. And so this harmonic function that we have here um, can be obtained as the real part of an analytic function using the Cauchy integral formula. And actually, that derivation of it is much, much easier than the one that we saw here. It, uh, it takes far less work. So in general, the, the Cauchy integral, uh, the uh, uh, the, the formula for u at the function z given by this thing that we've seen right here looks like some integral around the um, uh, boundary around the circle of f and then we've got some kernel function that takes two variables that being integrated against it and this, this kernel function, written in terms of complex variables, looks like, uh, well, actually, here, let me include the normalization because it is a measure. Um, so this is the magnitude of zeta squared minus magnitude of z squared all over um, z minus zeta squared and then if you uh, tend toward the boundary so if this is this is at a particular point z but if we choose points z that are closer and closer to the boundary so say c is in the boundary here it converges to a Dirac mass at c And so let, let me uh, draw you a picture here of, of how to visualize this. Well, uh oh. So let me draw you a picture here of how to visualize this. This is the kind of thing that, that we have going. So um, what I've graphed for you is um, uh, for a given point z, here's a picture of k, like the green is k z1 comma zeta. Um, 
as, as uh, shown for, for where it, it is uh, over the boundary, basically. So as your point Z gets closer and closer to the boundary, you can see that it gets more and more concentrated right in a neighborhood close to Z until eventually when you hit the boundary and you just have a Dirac mass there. Um, it's also uh, illuminating somewhat to take a look at what happens in higher dimensions. So here we're just looking at a disk in R2, but exactly the same thing happens more generally in, in Rn. So if we take the ball of radius n to be all of the points, now x denotes uh, a vector in Rn, and we take all the ones that have magnitude uh, less than or equal to r, um, then there's a formula for a function that's harmonic inside uh, with a given boundary condition f, and it will be the integral over the boundary of the ball, so the sphere on the outside, of f of zeta times px zeta d zeta, where now this uh, kernel here is um, 1 over the radius and then times omega n minus 1. So that's going to be the surface area of, um, so omega n minus 1 is the surface area measure of the, the sphere. Oh, actually, it's, uh, it's uh, there we go sphere of radius 1, and then just for normalization. And then we've got uh, r squared minus magnitude x squared all over uh, magnitude of x minus zeta squared. Um, so it works out just the same in higher dimensions.